So I will speak about, again about ribosome, again about protein biosynthesis, but slowly we will move in direction to what kind of useful stuff we can do with the knowledge of ribosome structure and protein biosynthesis in, in, in terms of structure. Um, we will move in direction of medical science, medical biology science, and in order to go there, we will compare two systems. One is bacterial system and, and eukaryotic system. So here you see structure of bacterial ribosome, which was determined uh, about 2000, uh, year 2000. And this is structure of first eukaryotic ribosome, simplest one is yeast ribosome, and determined 10 years later. <coughs> so, if to, I will ask you to remember my yesterday talk. So, this is the scheme of protein biosynthesis in bacteria. Here you can see elongation cycle. This one is initiation process, initiation of translation. You remember three factors involved in this business. And then we have termination and recycling. If to compare with eukaryotic system, we have common only elongation type, elongation cycle. Because the initiation process is much more complicated with 12 different factors, then termination process is slightly different from, from bacteria. Then recycling is completely different from, from bacteria. So these processes are much more involved in regulation of protein biosynthesis system, but of course protein biosynthesis itself, it's very similar with the same type of factors, with the same type of tRNAs and messenger RNA as well. <coughs> so now, if to look to the structure of ribosome, because we determined it by, by X-ray at high resolution, at atomic level, so we can do interpretation of every atom of the ribosome. In bacteria case, we have this structure, which is about 2.5 million Dalton. In eukaryotic case, in yeast case, we have about 3.5 million Dalton. This is, this is structure much bigger than, uh, than, than, than bacteria ribosome, but the core is about 2 million Dalton, is very similar. I will come to that to explain in more details. Just one more thing to say, that this is structure of, of human ribosome. In human ribosome, the mass become even more than in East ribosome, but interpretable part, the part which is interpreted for the moment on atomic level, is the same as in East the additional elements of, eukary of human, human system, which you can see here by traces, this is expansion segments of ribosomal RNA. They are flexible and not interpreted. If to compare, system, if to compare uh, bacteria and eukaryotic ribosomes, as I said, that there are, there are expansion elements, expansion segments of ribosomal RNA, in small ribosomal subunits, you can see in red. In large ribosomal subunits, you can see also in red. And that adds significant part of significant part of mass. But also proteins are, now we, instead of 50 proteins in bacteria, we have 80 proteins in yeast and in human as well. So in terms of proteins, no difference between yeast and, and human system. If to compare the <clears throat> type of proteins which we have in, in, in bacteria and in eukaryotes, you, have, you see that 34 proteins are common. So it's a very interesting question of evolutionary that to imagine that our ribosome is 34 proteins are the same like in bacteria. There are specific proteins, of course, in bacteria case, in, in, small, uh, in bacteria case and, and specific proteins in eukaryotic case. 
So, if to speak about expansion segments of ribosomal RNA, the location of them in the structure, of the final structure of ribosome, you can see in red. They are located in the surface of ribosome. So they are not involved in business in interface area. You remember that all functional element, all function of the ribosome happen in interface. The tRNAs are there, messenger RNAs there, factors are binding also there. So these <coughs> expansion elements, the function of them, even if they add one million Dalton, they are not known today. So it's open question. So if to look for, for the new, new ribosomal proteins, in red, this is completely new ribosomal proteins. In yellow, this kind of proteins are conservative in bacteria and in, <coughs> and in, in, in eukaryotes. In some cases, like uh, whatever here, you can see that there are significant part conservative part plus additional element which is different between human and uh, or yeast and bacteria. If to summarize all additional new elements between bacteria and and yeast, you can we can color them in red. And you can see that the basic part, the core part of the ribosome is very similar. And especially, we need to pay attention to the functional sites, like decoding area, where the tRNA and messenger RNA meet each other for the first time. So peptidyl transferase center, they are completely gray. So it means that they are the same. Not exactly the same. <laughs> <coughs> the simple question. Um, okay, I will come later a little bit to this. So now we are coming to something um, closer to medical medical biology side. It is interaction of small <clears throat> small molecules with the ribosome and inhibition of ribosome function. And the first is antibiotics. Antibiotics are affecting ribosome function in every step of protein biosynthesis. This is elongation cycle. Here is the tRNA binding cycle, peptide bond formation, translocation step, and you can see that every element, every step, has group of antibiotics which can bind the ribosome and inhibit completely protein biosynthesis. <clears throat> um, how it's important? It's not only it's not only uh, antibiotics which inhibit ribosome function, but they can bind also to protein factors and eliminate protein factor from the function, and then, uh, again, protein biosynthesis system will stop. <clears throat> For example, here we have elongation factor G binding. This is fusidic acid, <clears throat> classical inhibitor of elongation factor G. <clears throat> when we have problem with, um, with, let's say we damage our finger, we go to the pharmacy, buy the grease, which has name antibiotic grease. Okay. This is fusidic acid. This is just fusidic acid, which will interact with G factor or elongation factor two in our system, and uh, no, with um, with G factor and inhibit G factor and will kill bacteria, which will damage us. Okay. This is how it works. <coughs> Just to remind you that this is three important functional sites. Decoding center, where the tRNA in A site interact with messenger RNA and form the triplet duplex. <coughs> Peptidyl transferase center on the large ribosomal subunits where two tRNAs together and we have peptide bone formation. And then peptide tunnel, which goes through the 50S ribosomal subunit <clears throat> and peptide goes out to solution from the backside. 
first analysis of antibiotics which are known showed that they are located, one group located on interface area of small ribosomal subunit around messenger RNA and tRNA binding sites. This is messenger RNA, this is A tRNA binding site, P tRNA binding site, and there are several well known antibiotics like tetracycline, aminoglycosides, tryptomycin, EDN, and azubamycin. All these guys, which are well known and, and used for our, for, for, for our, I don't know, at least in my childhood, we were using tetracycline quite often. And, and now uh, pharmaceutical companies, they change the names. Okay, but this is only for trading, not for, for, for molecular biologists. We know that this is tetracycline. And it works, and I will show you how it works. Then another group of antibiotics located in the tunnel, or in the beginning of tunnel, in peptidyl transferase center of the large ribosomal subunit, and this is tunnel of the slice of large ribosomal subunit with PTRNA and growing peptide. You see group of antibiotics here. <coughs> so, um, I want to show you a small movie. So this is modeling of protein biosynthesis, protein biosynthesis in the cell. So you see initiation of translation, and now tRNA deliver the, the new amino acid binding tRNA bias to A site. And after peptidyl transferase reaction, the peptide is growing, and new amino acid is interpolated. And here you see the messenger RNA, and the tRNA binds to the messenger RNA according to the triplet which, which we have. This is simple version of protein biosynthesis without involvement of factors. Non, uh, we say non-enzymatic system. But <clears throat> so if we have in the system tetracycline, tetracycline comes and binds in decoding center. And just by presence of tetracycline in the ribosome, it distorts the binding of tRNA in a site. So simultaneously, presence of tetracycline and tRNA impossible. So in the presence of tetracycline, the protein biosynthesis stop, and stop just because of this steric clash between between tRNA and tetracycline. Tetracycline doesn't have very high affinity, and it is very old type of antibiotics. Now we have another type of antibiotics I will show it later. <clears throat> so it can bind and leaves, and if it leaves, protein biosynthesis continues, so somehow bacteria will survive in, in conditions in the presence of tetracycline. Pharmaceutical companies, they continue developing of tetracycline case, and this is, tetra this is new type of tetracycline, has named tetracycline. You can see that it has basic, basic uh, chemistry the same, plus modification of this chemistry. This is ribosomal elements involved in, in the binding of tetracycline on the ribosome. And by the presence of this modification, we add one more additional contact in the ribosome. Very strong one, actually. This is, this is stacking <coughs> interaction here. And it's increased significantly affinity of tetracycline in comparison with initial tetracycline. And now, today, if you buy antibiotics with the name of tetracycline, that will be tetracycline. This is third generation of the new type of antibiotics. This is just to show you that how small molecule is able to inhibit completely protein biosynthesis system. <clears throat> now we are coming back to the question. I show you that I show you that uh, bacteria and human ribosome is very similar in the case of binding in the case of decoding center, how small antibiotic is able to distinguish differences between our ribosome and ribosome of bacteria? That's a very important question, because 
uh, normally antibiotics should, should kill every bacteria, showing uh, our preliminary data of, of the, um, of the um, how to say, uh, homology between or uh, identity between bacteria and human ribosome. So another question was for us to study eukaryotic inhibitors and to understand how they inhibit eukaryotic ribosome and why in some cases they cannot inhibit bacteria ribosome. Okay. So <clears throat> after many antibiotics analysis we 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 were able to to collect 16 of them, which are eukaryotic, eukaryotic inhibitors. Among these this 16 antibiotics uh, inhibitors, 12 of them eukaryotic specific. Eukaryotic specific means that they can inhibit only eukaryotic ribosome, and for some reason they cannot inhibit bacteria. And we want to find the reason why they cannot do it. <clears throat> no, first of all, we made localization of these antibiotics on the ribosome. So one <clears throat> eukaryotic inhibitor binds to the ribosome, and, and we, we show that location of them are similar to, to bacteria, but not completely. So some of them located on, if, if around decoding center and messenger RNA path, which is similar to, to, to bacteria. <clears throat> some of them located in peptidyl transferase center, which is similar to bacteria. But this is new type of inhibition, which is specific for eukaryotes. <clears throat> they bind to, to about around CCA end of tRNA in E site and block the translocation of tRNA from P site to E site. In the presence of that antibiotic, tRNA cannot move from one site to another. Um, during last two years, we had four publications uh, showing how these type of inhibitors could be used for medical reasons, and one of them uh, one publication came out last week, and we have a cover, and, and I wanted to show it to you <coughs> and explain what it means. So, this is ribosome. <laughs> this is flour, which is, uh, which is used for extraction of one type of inhibitor, which can be used as anti-cancer drug. And this inhibitor works against ribosome. And I'm going to show you four, uh, not, maybe not four, but we have four already examples of anti-cancer drugs, which natural origin, which is which people are developing as anti-cancer drug, but the target is ribosome. Ribosome inhibitors, specific ribosome inhibitors. So now coming back to 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 inhibitors. First, I'm going to speak about cyclohexamine. Cyclohexamide is classical, uh, you probably, some of you know and use it, classical inhibitor which inhibit eukaryotic ribosome and eukaryotic translation system, but doesn't work in bacteria case at all. And we would like to know why. <coughs> so the binding site of inhibitor, uh, of cyclohexamide, sorry, of cyclohexamide, as I said, this is about CCA end of e site tRNA. <clears throat> and if to describe the binding site of, uh, in the ribosome, environment is completely RNA environment. The closest protein, the eukaryotic specific protein. So this protein exists only, only in eukaryotes. There is no this protein in bacteria. Name is L45, oh, pardon, 44. Uh, we analyze also another inhibitor, uh, which has name <coughs> lactimidomycin, which has very similar to cyclohexamide story plus uh, chemistry plus, plus these additional elements here. Um, 
But if two mono bacteria ribosome and this in inhibition site, you can see that instead of protein in bacteria, we have RNA loop here, which which is which going inside of cyclohexamide binding site. So this is the first structural biology explanation why bacteria does not accept this eukaryote, this inhibitor. And this inhibitor works only against eukaryotic ribosome. <clears throat> so when we published this story, we got the mail from United States, from California University, one chemistry group uh, reading our publication, they found that, that we analyzed cyclohexamine and lactimidomycin and they say that we are working with anti-cancer inhibitor, natural anti-cancer inhibitor, which has very similar chemical group, which we published. So we say, okay, send. And we got immediately binding of this inhibitor to the ribosome, exactly the case of uh, very similar to, to the place of binding of cyclohexamine. So prediction was absolutely correct, and we found that the target of, actually it's a, also a funny story, because they are chemist people, huh? they are developing this anti-cancer drug, and then they apply for money for NIH, and the goal was to find the target. <coughs> we closed NIH grant just in one day. <laughs> okay, so, but anyway, now they got it again, so, <laughs> because now they know the target, but they, now they, they can develop it later. They didn't write to you again. No, no, we, <laughs> now, no now we are in collaboration. Huh? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a positive thing. <clears throat> so, that, uh, but the question is, can we use, because our system is east, East ribosome system, okay? But then we are speaking about anti-cancer drugs that has to be uh, interpretation on the level. Yeah, it's it's question about the modeling uh, models, what kind of models we use. So of course, we compare here comparison of environment of, of this anti-cancer drug uh, interaction with East and and with with human. Practically no difference at least in the binding site, is the same. So it means that we can use that model for development of human anti-cancer drug in the future with, with other modifications of this, of this chemical. So coming back to, I will show you a second example. I will show you a second example. Is That was inhibition of this area. Now inhibition of this area. Is actually when we speak about, yeah, just just one thing. So, this is peptidyl transferase center. <clears throat> in our in our analysis of because our goal was to understand why inhibition are specific, why it works in in eukaryotic case, it doesn't work in prokaryotic case. Once we explain, so here we have peptidyl transferase inhibitors. This one is non-specific. For some reason, all specificity, eukaryotic specificity, collected here. Eight different inhibitors, all of them working similar way. And one of them, as I explained, one of them comes from Narcis, from that flower, which we published last week, with the beautiful picture that uh, I showed to you. But the story is, this is actually poison, which is classical poison, which is well known in the history, and people use it, I mean, uh, uh, <laughs> so royal families use it for many reasons, okay, for <clears throat> to get extract, to get this extract and use it for, uh, for, for business, and then and then we know today that with the same type of extract, we, with, the, with, with correct way of use, uh, can be used as anti-cancer drug. Okay, well, we come to this. Um, 
Coming back to our scientific question, why this inhibitor works in eukaryotes and doesn't work in prokaryotes? Because when you look at the environment of environment of interaction of one of these inhibitors, is the same the same nucleotides, cytosine here, uracil here. This is the direct interaction. <coughs> but as you can see, in in Saccharomyces cerevisiae and E. coli, the orientation of these two identical nucleotides are different. And just by opening the orientation, changing the angle of these nucleotides, we have specificity of interaction. In yellow case, you cannot get this inhibitor on the, on, on the ribosome, and this is bacteria case, but in, in magenta case, you can have binding of this protein, and this is eukaryotic case. And that's happened because the mutation comes on the second layer of this. Here we have differences in adenosine and cytosine and differences, and that's why orientation of these nucleotides are different and, and specificity is different. <clears throat> By these two examples, I just wanted to show to you how important uh, analyze the, uh, the interaction area of inhibitors or drugs at, si at that level, at chemical level. We cannot speak um, uh, we cannot speak on in general. That is, in general, uh, functional functional uh, functional sites of the ribosome in bacteria and human are very similar. But when we go deeper in this analysis, then we can speak about why it's different <coughs> and how we can develop our drugs to be sure that it will work only against bacteria and will or against uh, cancer cells, whatever. So, <coughs> that was anti-cancer drug development story, and now I would like to switch to another type of inhibitors which are also interesting uh, in development, and this is an, uh, ribosome, ribosome inhibitors. <coughs> there, is one, there is one problem which in, exist, uh, it's about 15% of genetic diseases are uh, red flu diseases. So when we have uh, premature stop codons, when we have stop codon in a gene by mutation in the middle of the gene, and like that, ribosome reading that, that information will do aborts every time when it reached the stop codon in the middle of the gene. And that is very big problem in, in, in medicine to develop the drug when uh, against these kind of diseases without, without changing the genotype. And the idea is um, to use such kind of drug when the ribosome will do mistake. When ribosome will not recognize the stop codon and will incorporate, for example, wrong tRNA. And in this case, if we will incorporate wrong tRNA, we will have one amino acid mutation, which is sometimes is not damaging the final product, and, and the protein can work and person can survive. <coughs> Here is just schematically shown that. If we have stop quorum in a site, we will have competition between between release factor, which I explained to you as as the as for to 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 create the stop of translation and release of of, of the not complete uh, peptide, and necognate tyranny, the tyranny which is not exactly correct tyranny which can bind to this to this a site and and protein biosynthesis will continue just by one sometimes not important uh, um, amino acid in, in, the, in the structure of protein. Of course, if this amino acid is in the functional site, then it is important. But if it is in the structural site, sometimes it is not important, and protein can, can be useful. 
So <clears throat> the type of the type of anti uh, the type of inhibitors or antibiotics what people are using for such kind of diseases are aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides, this is antibacterial antibiotics, but they also interact with human system. So for us it's important to learn why actually antibiotics this kind of antibiotics interact with bacteria and they are not interacting with human system normally. Okay, because we, we ask scientific question, not medical question. Um, so I mean glycosides, this is this is large a small ribosomal subunit. Here we, we have helix forty four and this is the binding site and this is three TRNAs APE and this is binding site of antibiotic amino glycoside. If to increase the, <clears throat> if to, to make magnification of tRNA in A site, tRNA sitting in a large ribosomal subunit case, this is peptidyl transferase center. This is anticodon stem loop. Here we have anticodon stem loop of that tRNA in the small ribosomal subunit. Here you see messenger RNA, and this is triple duplex, uh, duplex of between between messenger RNA and anticodon, an anticodon of tRNA, and here in this decoding center, in this environment, there are two nucleotides, which the most important stabilizers of, of this duplex, 1493-1492. Let's compare these nucleotides in human system and in bacteria system, and you will see immediately differences. 1493-1492. In bacteria, <coughs> the same adenosine, adenosine in human system, and you can see the differences. We have substitution of the pair of this adenosine, not pair, but uh, the, the closest. So we have instead of adenosine, guanosine here, and on the top of it, we have instead of GA here, and no base pair. Here we have base pair, here there is no base pair. And this is one of the classical <coughs> aminoglycoside, basic part of aminoglycoside, and they bind to that area of interaction. So they go directly to bacteria case, and they have difficulties in binding of humans to human uh, ribosome. So we found two explanations for that. <coughs> What's the, why we have these differences? So here is neomycin, one, one, of, the, one of the type of uh, aminoglycosides which interact with the ribosome, and we can see, we can, we can see here uh, amino group which can, which can be on the ribosome only in case if we have here adenosine. And adenosine we have only in bacteria case. If we have human system, we have guanosine, and guanosine has also amino group, and two amino groups are disturbing each other. So, like that, we can explain why amino glycoside can bind only to bacteria and not to human. Another case of explanation is if, if you remember, I said that <coughs> I said that here we have base pair, and here we have no base pair. And because we have no base pair, you can see in yellow, we have base pair between A, G, A, G, but in case of C, A, the nucleotide goes out, and nucleotides doesn't form base pair here, and it, because of the new position of, 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 this, of this nucleotide, it's disturbing, disturbing ring 3 of, of, amino, of amino glycosides as well. So, again, just to confirm my conclusion that the level of interpretation of such kind of interactions on chemical level, this is already much deeper than just general, general view of the ribosome. Um, couple more things. <coughs> so, um, there, is, there are some diseases which, which, which we, we are trying to, de to, 
to learn structure of the ribosome because, because there is no good drugs against candida, for example. Candida is the classical, classical um, um, yeast, I would say. It's very similar. It's very similar to yeast, but it's a painful uh, organism for hospitals because after treatment of after treatment of chemical treatments, after treatment uh, for AIDS, uh, acid. Oh my God. Uh, in French, it's SIDA. In, uh, HIV. Huh? HIV. 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 Yes, in case of HIV. <laughs> yeah, in case of HIV, after chemical treatments, after when all bacteria is gone, the first organism which comes to this area is uh, Candida. <coughs> and in hospitals, they spend a lot of money. To, to, to have very expensive drugs to, against this candida because, because the, to, to get the balance of, of microorganisms in our body, it takes, it takes money and time. So we would like to study candida ribosome and give to people structure of the ribosome for development of new drugs. That's the general idea. So we... <coughs> Solve the structure. Um, we didn't publish yet because the resolution is not good enough. This is 3.7 angstrom resolution, and it is not good, as I explained to you, at at the level which which people have to use this structure for development of drugs. The level has to be about three angstrom resolution or better. Uh, because the interpretation should be in uh, the chemical level. But even by, by uh, informatic analysis, we found very interesting phenomena. <coughs> we are coming back to binding site of, of uh, cyclohexamine. Cyclohexamine binding site in candida is different. <coughs> so uh, empirically, in hospitals, in order to identify, is it pathogenic candida or non-pathogenic candida, they use cyclohexamide treatment. If cyclohexamide works, so it means that this is not pathogenic candida. If cyclohexamide doesn't work, this is pathogenic one. And the reason what we found, just by analysis of this environment, the one we have one differences in amino acid of this specific of this eukaryotic specific protein, L42. Here we have proline, and here we have glutamine, which is much bigger, and it goes directly to the binding site of cyclohexamine and distort binding of cyclohexamine. That's why this empirically known method works. But at the same time, it's opened the area for development of drugs uh, specifically for this kind of environment of, of, candy, of real candida albicans. So in the final story, which I would like to show you, <coughs> we are working also with Staphylococcus. The same reason. We are trying to develop the, the methodology of working with uh, working with uh, ribosome structure and protein biosynthesis mechanism of Staphylococcus in order to give people <coughs> material for development of new drugs. Uh, okay, this I'm not going to keep it long. Um, <coughs> here we use another method. Staphylococcus ribosome, until now, we got crystals, but Crystals are not diffracting very well, and we cannot use X-ray analysis for, 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 for interpretation of, of the structure. So we start to use new technology, which is, as I said yesterday, was developed last year significantly. This is cryo-electron microscopy. Cryo-electron microscopy is different. We can analyze the structure of the ribosome in frozen solution. So, <coughs> and the technology of this is to, to, prepare, to prepare grids 
of, of, the, of the ribosome. And here we have, we collected, we collected about half million particles. And then, by selection of these particles, by identity, identical, identical shape, we finally come, came to, to 100,000 particles, and this amount was used for, for interpretation of the, of the ribosome. So this is electron density map of the final, of the final structure at 3.9 and later at 3.7 angstrom resolution. And then <coughs> I have to say one important thing, that because of the eukaryotic, <coughs> uh, uh, because of, because of uh, analysis of cryo-electron microscopy in solution, you can imagine that the flexible part of the ribosome, they can be flexible uh, in means frozen in different orientations, and this decreased the level of resolution. Here, presentation of the resolution of, of, of the ribosome which we got with this scale. At, at deep blue is three angstrom resolution, which is atomic level, really inside such a solid material which we can interpret at high resolution. But going to the surface, it become much more flexible and interpretation of that area it will be will be very difficult so how it works so we get we get this kind of this kind of electron density map then we take our x-ray structure <laughs> of the ribosome and fit in in this structure and then we have kind of basic material for interpretation and then we can we can transfer uh, the all sequences according to to our knowledge to to Staphylococcus ribosome. So because of because we were studying Staphylococcus ribosome, and first what we did, having this, we studied dimerization of Staphylococcus ribosome. There is a there is a mm, um, mechanism of. Uh, protection of ribosomes uh, in every cell, including, including Staphylococcus. At the chemical treatment, or for example, we treat bacteria by, by antibiotics, and ribosomes, in order to survive, they stop translation and they dimerize. And dimerization goes in the presence of, uh, in the presence of uh, uh, hibernation factor. His, this is the name Staphylococcus hibernation factor. And we, we get this kind of dimers. And then we would like to know where is, the, where is the position of this hibernation factor. So hibernation factor in our work in Staphylococcus case is this one. It has N terminal domain and C terminal domain. In case of E. coli, this is the, instead of one protein, there are two proteins. One is similar to, to N-terminal domain of Staphylococcus, and another one is here. This is different. This is two proteins. So our case is this, then linker, and then C-terminal domain. Oops. So when we, when we try to analyze how, what, 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 what these two domains are doing, we will see in, the, in our structure that scan terminal domain take the place of actually of very important antibiotic action, actions. So we treat the bacteria by antibiotic. <coughs> antibiotic binds the protein, and in the presence of this protein, we, they go for dimerization. Even, even if they do not work in protein biosynthesis, they can survive. And when, when antibiotics gone, whatever, in time, we can get dissociation and the pro and ribosome can come back to the function. And C-terminal domain is involved in dimerization. In the structure of C-terminal domain, we solve independently by NMR and X-ray, so we, do, we did combination of all approaches what, what is existing. This is practically all what I wanted to, to show you, how we can use knowledge of 
structural biology knowledge of the ribosome and protein biosynthesis system. This is group of Bulnari and Supola who was involved in, in significant part of all these stories what I said. This is my group a few years ago when we were big, now we were much smaller. Uh, we have less money. <coughs> And this is group of Kazan University, which I'm coaching in Kazan in Russia. And we were doing all the story of Staphylococcus. This is story of, uh, of these people. Okay, thank you very much.